Sage Wonder here, coming at you from my van down by the river. Merry Christmas! Woohoo! Merry Christmas! It is Christmas Eve, and I wanted to uh, put out a video and apologize for not having put out a video in a while between the holidays and the knee injury. I've been laid up. Um, I won't whine about the knee injury, but <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to make a video when you're hurting all the time. I'm going to try to get through this one. So, um, I wanted to talk about EMPs. You know, I've been talking about a possible EMP attack against America on my channel. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, other people are talking about EMP and or grid down scenarios. Now, a lot of people say EMP slash grid down like it's the same thing. And I want to talk a, a bit about the difference between the power grid going down and an EMP. So the main difference between the two, an EMP takes out everything. It takes out the power grid and everything you would plug into it. So all of your electronic computerized devices would be rendered useless forever in the event of an EMP. That this kind of electromagnetic pulse released over the United States from an aerial uh, device or from a satellite could uh, you know, render everything electronic useless. Now... Uh, having said that, I talk a little bit about uh, this in, well, it's the center kind of uh, concept in my Civil War uh, fictional tale, of post, a fictional post-apocalyptic tale. Uh, you can look at the first two episodes, and I am making more. I'm not walking away from that project at all. Um, after the first of the year, we'll get busy on that and release a bunch of new information on, uh, on that series. But in that series, I speculate the concept that uh, using drones, you can make a smaller, more precise EMP device that could take out, say, regions or just states or just metro areas. Um, this would also take down the power grid in that area. But if one uh, knew it was coming and knew that they were going to do it and they had control of the power grid, they could reroute power around it and only take out a certain area and all of their electronic devices without hurting themselves in the process. So in my Civil War novel that I'm writing on YouTube, uh, that's kind of the concept. The basics of my, of my concept is it was a surgical EMP kind of strike. Now, having said that, but all of those scenarios are very different from a grid down scenario. So what is a grid down scenario? So our power grid is this loose based web of power stations, transfer stations, transformers, above ground cabling. I mean, our power system in America is uh, kind of grew up wild like a weed. You know, there was no training in our power grid. It just grew as we needed more power. We added more junk to it. So that's what we have, a big pile of junk that we call a power grid. So uh, there's really no uh, auton autonomous control over the whole thing. It's all of these individual power stations, and they're all connected and sharing energy. So the theory is, if one were able to displace this flow of energy... You could cause a domino effect shutting down the power grid across the entire United States of America. And it would really only take taking out a few key places to interrupt the flow of power, disabling the transfer of energy, and blacking out whole regions, if not the entire United States of America. Now, I won't get into too many details about different regions and where is it best to be. I know that Texas is pretty insulated against this. I feel safe that in a grid down situation in the Pacific Northwest here in Oregon, that we could get power up and running rather quickly compared to the rest of the countries because uh, rest of the country rather, uh, because we have hydroelectric dams that were built in the 1930s, and that that technology possibly could be rerouted to repower the power uh, the power grid if the power grid goes down. It's so complicated that a lot of people don't understand. Um, you know, what it would take to take our power grid down. They don't really understand how um, how vulnerable we are to an attack on our power grid. And they also don't understand and don't really comprehend yet and haven't researched enough what it would take to get it up and running if something happened. And there's so many variables about what could happen to the power grid, it's almost impossible to plan for. So... Although we are very susceptible to EMP because of our electronic world that we live in, our our day-to-day -day lives rely upon the power grid. 
You could live without your phone, theoretically. <laughs> but you can't get gas for your car without electricity to pump it up from the tanks and into your car. That, that's an electric pump. And so most water stations are powered by electric pumps. Most home well systems are powered by electric pumps. All of our sewer systems are powered by electric pumps. Now, I would like to say that um, that this has never happened, that this is a fantasy, that no one could possibly take down our power grid and that no one would want to. Who would want to do that? But unfortunately, I can't say that because just four years ago, now you can add this to the many stories that you saw on the news and went, oh my gosh, and then never heard anything else about because it was swept under the rug, like Las Vegas. Um, yeah, well... This is another one of those that happened and kind of got swept under the rug. Back in 2014, in San Jose, California, a small group of military-style and trained snipers attacked a power station with high-powered rifles. And they shot 17 of the transformers at one of these power transfer stations. And it almost took down the entire grid for the Silicon Valley that had they been successful there, that all of the websites and all of the servers in the Silicon Valley would have gone dark just like that without power to run them. Uh, now, I don't know in 2014 since then whether they've gotten more sophisticated in defending against this kind of thing, but I think not since this seemed very much like a terrorist attack or at least a dry run when these multiple snipers hit this power station and took out these 17 Transformers with rifle fire, it almost seemed like they were testing to see what would happen if they did that, how much damage could they do, and could they in fact black out the internet potentially by taking out Silicon Valley. Um, so the thing is, the FBI said it was not a terrorist attack. It was vandalism. They said, ah, it's just vandalism. But, you know, many high-level officials disagree, and there's a little bit of conser consideration and concern now in this world that we live in where the deep state is being shown as being very corrupt, that maybe they knew exactly what this power grid run was, and they covered it up. Don't, don't, don't. You know, was this a dry run to see, to see what they would do? But they did manage to keep the power grid up and running despite the 17 transformers because they were able to quickly reroute electricity around that power station and patch the power grid. Had the interruption been completed and they had not gotten the power grid rerouted before the disruption was complete, apparently, according to some of these experts. I don't, I don't pretend to understand how all of this works. I don't know that a lot of people do understand, or even the people running it really completely understand what's going on here. It's a patchwork quilt at best. But they rerouted around it and prevented a total blackout of Silicon Valley by that much. So, you know, there was a Navy SEAL that uh, went around uh, hiding his identity who was basically telling people that it was, it was the understanding of special forces that 15 well-trained troops with the intention to do so, do so, a crew of 15, could cause our power grid to fail using this exact method of shooting these transformers with standard rifles. Deer rifles, bolt action rifles. I mean, this is not, uh, you don't need a machine gun for this. Anything that can poke a hole in these unarmored, unprotected transformers can screw up everything. And in turn, it could very well take down our entire power grid. Now, so what's the big difference, as far as a prepper goes, if I'm trying to prepare for this, what's the big difference between an EMP and a power grid failure? Well, with an EMP, you, can, you cannot create your own electricity unless you've had all of your devices stored in a Faraday cage. Because of an aerial burst of EMP, it will destroy your electronics unless they're properly protected. But with a power grid failure, chances are every single device from your cell phone to your uh, blender for your margaritas will still work if you could supply your own power. So people with generators would be able to run for a while until the gasoline ran out. That people 
who um, who had solar panels would be able to continue running and having the modern conveniences and being involved in communication and whatnot, whereas the average Joe who had not prepared would be completely uh, blacked out from all of this, and even though he had gadgets, he would have no way of recharging them without some solar power or some electri uh, some generators. So how does this specifically affect us? I'll give you a case in point. Uh, everyone knows that I live in a van down by the river. And that it's not just any van. I've done some upgrades. Well, <laughs> we won't talk about the upgrades. Let's talk about the benefit of using a old van to start with. So this is a 1977 van uh, with a 78 conversion. And um, so it started life as a one-ton van in 1977. And there, as far as I know, are not any electronic upgrades on this coach at all. So it should start right up because it has no computer problems or, or you know, no, no modern silicon chips to be fouled by an EMP. So this machine should start up in an EMP. So in an EMP, this would be a great vehicle to have because there would be plenty of gas. All I got to do is get a hand pump and crank it up and put it in my pre-EMP, uh, pre-computer era vehicle, and I should be able to drive in the zombie apocalypse uh, indefinitely, honestly. And um, But, you know, eventually people are going to start uh, creating EMP-proof vehicles out of the old vehicles, converting them to be EMP-proof by putting standard distributors and carburetors on them and, and or retrofitting or uh, upgrading, rather, or overhauling old vehicles and making them run so eventually the gas would become more competitive but at first I'd be amongst a handful of people with hundreds of thousands if not millions of gallons of gas in gas tanks in vehicles underground it's just everywhere because their vehicles wouldn't run because they're computerized now that's very different from a grid down in a grid down situation everyone's vehicles would still run and everyone would be clamoring for gas and whatever gas we had was the gas you had in your tank or in that tank at the gas station which would quickly dry up so in a grid down situation it would be much better to have solar panels and a rechargeable electric vehicle like an e-bike what is an e-bike an e-bike is an electric powered uh, bicycle you can get these uh, Quiet Cat with a K, Quiet with a, and then Cat with a K, makes these great hunting bikes, but they're like 3,000 bucks. But they can take you deep into BLM and deep into forestry country land, even when you got a bad knee. <laughs> you could just hit the throttle and drive out there. Many of them have a 20 to 40 mile range. And uh, if you have a solar panel, well, you can just camp out for as long as it takes to recharge your battery and come home. So that would be a benefit. In an EMP, it's probably worthless since most of your electronic charging equipment and uh, the throttle and all of that, those rheostats, everything is reliant upon silicone chips these days. So most of those would be rendered useless in an EMP, but in a grid down, woo, you're, you're rocking it. You're the only guy who can get from point A to point B because there's no way to move gasoline and there's no way to pump it without electricity. I won't even talk, get into talking about surviving either one of these in the winter. Uh, you better have a source of fuel and a way to stay warm if you live in a northern climate. <clears throat> anyway, so I wanted to talk about the difference. That's a big difference, right, between an EMP, which takes out all of the devices, and a grid down, which just takes out the electrical supply. <clears throat> they say grid down can be fixed depending on how bad the damage was to the power station. So aerial, aerial assaults that took out multiple power stations, it could be that one year to 18 month period where you're out of electricity. EMPs are going to be at least that. But some grid down scenarios might have a limited blackout, maybe of 30 days or less. So it just depends on how bad the damage is. I don't think anybody who examines this situation and the way we live today would argue that without power, 90% of the people would perish that they don't know how to feed themselves, they don't know how to hunt or fish or gather, they don't know how to grow a garden, they don't know how to do anything for themselves. No one even has books anymore because everybody just Googles it. What happens if you can't Google it? So America is vulnerable and our enemies are many. And many of our enemies are in our own country anymore these days. So 
I don't know. Tell me what you think about the difference between an EMP and a grid down situation. Do you think you'd have a chance to survive? And um, how do you prep for both? I mean, they're very different. Prepping for an EMP is not at all the same as prepping for grid down. But an EMP would definitely cause grid down. All right, till next time, God save our republic.